Andrew McCart, IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. I'm here in Dubai. With me, I've got my, my old friend. He's neglected me, he's left me, he's bumped me to move to Dubai and have, have a good life. Danny Vaughan. Danny, first and foremost, how are things, mate? Andrew, life is great. I am sorry I haven't been in touch with as much as we should because obviously I'm living in Dubai now, yeah, but all good. Very, very good, very healthy, and that's the main thing. Yeah, that's definitely the main thing, yeah, health is wealth and all that, but let's just jump straight into it. Your fighter, Mohamed Wasim, who you've dubbed to be a world champion since you've had him three, four years ago, he's up against Sonny Edwards, who is a quality, quality operator in that ring. Let's, let's not beat around the bush. He's a very, very talented young fighter himself. What's your thoughts on the fight? How does your man beat Sonny Edwards? Listen, just to get out there first, I trained Sonny you know, for 12 months, and he's an outstanding boxer. You know, he does things in there what you don't really see. He's on all the talks that time. But, um... We're very confident of beating him. We know how good he is, but I know him personally as well. Like he's we've just come out of the gloves are off there and he said, I I don't know my arse from my elbow. Yeah. And as, as a trainer, which is that's his opinion. Then five minutes into the gloves are off, he said, Well, your trainer, Danny Vaughan, told me I'm the best of it he's ever seen. So why listen to Danny Vaughan if he just knows his arse from his elbow? So I don't know. The kid's a little bit confused. There has been sort of like, I don't know how much you want to go into it, but there has been some sort of back and forth between Sonny and just where does that stem from? The, the sort of animosity between you and Sonny? Because I know he said a couple of things saying that you don't have the capability to train a fighter to, to beat him. Um, so where does all this come from? Do you know what? You know, he has got, you know, he's got silky skills. He's a great, great little fighter. But everyone's beatable, Andrew. I mean, I've been studying Sonny for a long time for this fight for like, you know, 12 weeks and he has his moments in the fight where he unravels, you know, he switches off too much. You can't switch off with us because we're in there and as soon as he switches off and we know the rounds when he usually does it, we're going to capitalise on him. And don't be surprised on Saturday night if it's an early one because Mohamed Wazim is ready. He seems to be ready. I know, like, obviously the last fight probably... You couldn't quite get up for the fight, Mohamed Wazim, because obviously, you know I mean? He gets up for a fight, but this fight... I've worded that a little bit better, but this fight, is, you have to be up for it because you're facing, you're fighting for a world title. Do you know what I mean? So this is extra motivation to be ready and stay switched on. But you, you've been in the gym with uh, Mohammed for the best part of, what, 10 weeks now? You've seen him. You've been with him three years. Is he ready for the shot now? Andrew, honest to God, I mean, he's had his, you know, with visa problems and everything else. Prior to his last fight in November, he hadn't boxed for a year. Mm. So we'd won the WBC silver, we'd cemented our position as WBA to fight for the world title against Alec Iron. They offered us the fight. Well, why not take the fight? You know, we're up for the fight. We've asked for this fight. Sonny said he's asked for it once or three times. The three times I've been asked for it, we've said, yeah. So, you know, no one worries us. Out of the four world champions, if I'm honest, Sonny would be the one where I'd take. The other three are punchers. Sonny's not a puncher, he's a fantastic boxer, but as I said, he has his moments in fights, he switches off, and as I said, we'll jump all over him when he does. He has been dropped, Sonny, as well, you talking about being switched off, and Waz does pack a punch down at that weight. Um, you said don't be surprised if it goes early. That's, is that the game plan, or is that is, is that just a... To be honest, it's not the game plan, no, because you know we think we could win this on points. We're gonna. This is going to be a good fight. This is going to come down to margins and the right decisions at the right time in the fight you know it's we've done our own work i already know him personally what you see is what you get really you can't really change if he stands and fights he can't fight excuse me french he couldn't crack an egg you know he couldn't so we don't even have to take chances with him if you if you understand what i mean i mean we know he's going to move he's not going to stand and fight and you talk about levels with chin People having good chins. Now you say like you're a British level puncher, you're a European level puncher, and you're a world class puncher. What we're, what I'm saying is, if you're getting dropped at British level when you've been it on the chin, then you're getting dropped at European intercontinental level. So now you're at world level with someone who's not 40. Who you Maruti Metalani last time? Who's a legend by the way? I mean, Sonny's done ring rounds him, but he was done. Now he's in with a live opponent, and we're talking about getting it on the chin at world level. He won't be able to take it. That's just my opinion. Sonny's very, very vocal on opinion about me. My opinion is he'll go as soon as he gets it. I do want to. I do want to touch on that as well, Danny, because it seems like this fight's more Sonny Edwards against Danny Vaughan. Uh, obviously, the little location yesterday. Don't go into it because I don't. I don't know what's been said, and there was there was some touchy things that were said and all that sort of stuff. But again, why do you think that is? Why? Why is that? 
the thing is, is we know what I've just drawn it under the line. I've spoke to Sonny and Grant before me and as we sat down and put all the bitchiness away. But um, I ref- I sent Sonny home from the gym in Marbella because there was too much going on. He was talking behind backs and being a little bitch really with the Irish lads. He didn't get on with the Irish lads. He tried to make a divide with him and his brother Charlie and the other Irish lads, Paddy, Jamie, John O even. And you know, they didn't all get on. So the atmosphere in the gym come to where it was uncomfortable for me to be a trainer. Like if I'd trained Jamie Conlon, I was in the, the ring with Jamie Conlon for eight rounds and then I'd done seven with Charlie. They'd have something to say and it was uncomfortable. So us as a team, not just me at the, at the time in MTK, my, sorry, MGM Marbella, I decided to not train him because I always knew he was going to be a world champion. I knew Charlie. But what I'm saying to you is, I'm not giving my time to people who don't appreciate it. I mean, I've done hundred things good for them, maybe a couple of things bad. But what I'm saying is, they wasn't for me. So they've gone on and took their path and they've been world champions. I'm on mine, Waz is on his. I don't hold nothing against them, I don't resent them. You know, the good kids. All my concern is, is that they both come out safe on Saturday night. And all the little bitchiness and all that, yeah. I'm, a fi- I'm 50 years of age, I've got two sons who are 25, 28. Obviously they haven't been happy with what he was saying about me, but it's boxing. It goes on. I said a few bitchy things as well, but listen, it is what it is. It's a fight game. It's, it's a fight game. Mm-hmm. And if you haven't got thick skin, you fucks basically. Yeah, well, you've, got, you've got the thicker skin, Danny, trust me. Um, I, I mean, like, you talked about being a world champion and Waz becoming a world champion. I know how much that means to him, but as a coach for yourself, I mean, you've been close to winning a world title. Your dad, Georgie Vaughan, that's probably a lot of things that people talk about in Liverpool that Georgie probably deserved to have that world champion. What would that mean to you to be able to train a world champion? Yeah, it would mean the world to me, to be honest, but it's not about me. That's where, like, Sonny's bringing me into it because Waz is so relaxed and laid back. He doesn't... I mean, if this room fell down now, Waz would still be sitting there on his phone. <laughs> Nothing can, you know, phase wind him up or phase him. So, yeah, obviously it'd be a fantastic thing. I mean, the thing is with this fight is, this is history-making. Mohamed Azim will become the first Pakistani-born fighter to ever win a world title. Amir Khan, we look, He's a great fighter, he's won two world titles, but he's born in Bolton. Wasim was born in Quetta, Baluchistan, a rough part of Pakistan. You know, he's come with nothing. You know, he's got where he is here now, with grind, with work every single day. You know, and the work what we've put in over the last three years, it will, you know, on Saturday night you'll see a performance that people will sit up and go, shit, this kid is really the real deal. I've seen him spot on MG, MTK Scotland, so I, I know how good Waz is. So it's going to definitely going to be, and I know how, definitely know how good Sonny is, so it's going to be a, a cracking fight. But I do want to touch on another fighter in your gym who I've seen a lot on Instagram, who your, your son Dom talks to me a lot about, because I know you and Dom still talk, obviously being father and son, but you do talk a lot of boxing with your son, and he always echoes it. That's all you talk about, I know, which is good. That's, that's a good relationship. But he talks, to, he, he, Dom's letting me know about Batchkoff, and I do see him on, on these Instagram posts that you put up, man. How good is this kid, man? He looks, he looks sharp, he looks the part, and what I'm hearing, he is the part. Wow, what a fighter I've got. I mean, Ivanis Batchkov, he's an Olympic bronze medalist from 20, 2020, was it? Yeah. In Tokyo. He's two-time European champion, three times um, Wales bronze medalist, and he's only been beat off the likes of Andy Cruz and Keyshaw Davis. I mean, they're, they're like superstars. But this, this guy has got the IQ of a boxer, what I haven't seen before. And I'm learning off the kid. He's wow. absolutely outstanding. Just the way he conducts himself, what he does in the before training, the, you know the exercise he does before and after. His engine, I've never seen one like it. I mean, we used to say Ricky and Ricky Atten had a fantastic. I think he's out to out to Ricky with the engine he's got. His punch picking, his combinations. Andrew, I could talk all day about him, and he's a gentleman as well. Um, but that's, all, that's another thing with boxing. I've given so much time to boxing over the years. I'm 29 years a professional trainer now. So I only want to work with good people. Because at the time I've given, I'm never going to get back. So even the time what I give Sonny, Charlie, with all the bitchiness, at the end of the day, I give my time mm-hmm. to people. So all I want back is 110%. I can't be a nice fella all the time. You know, we're all human. You know, you poke the bear so much, it's going to bite. And sometimes you do, whether it's good or bad, you do do it, it's life. That, that, that is life, and like, like I said to you, it adds to the fight, it adds a little bit of spice to the fight. And sometimes, especially nowadays, looking, you, you can go back to Muhammad Ali, how he added spice to the to his fights, like chasing, was it Sonny listening down on the bus, or was, uh, I can't remember who that was, and all this stuff with Joe Frazier and stuff. 
so it, it adds a little bit of spice, even though it can be bitchiness and, and stuff like that, and stuff was said that shouldn't be said, but it's neither here nor there, so let's get back to boxing. Mohamed Wasim, Saturday night, live on Eurosport, um, four, I think 3,000, 4,000 fans in that lovely arena outside. What can we expect from Mohamed Wasim? You're going to expect, expect from Mohamed Wasim one of the best performances you're going to see from a flyweight in a long time. We know what we've got to do. The plan we're going to bring to the table will work and you'll see Mohamed Wasim crowned IBF world champion on Saturday night. Danny, absolutely perfect way to finish this interview then. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, it's, but then again, I don't know my ass from my elbow, so I could be talking shit. There you go, listen, <laughs> listen well, nah. who knows, listen, you do know box. I'll give you that. I'll just say this as well, all a little bit of bitchiness and stuff like that, what's been going on. If I'm honest, I like Sonny, I like Charlie. You know, things get said, he said to me, it's ESA, but at the end of the day, I've got no resentment or all grudges against anyone anymore. Maybe I did when I was younger. No, but I'm 50 now, and I'm loving life. I'm loving me boxing the more. I'm yeah. me living in Dubai. It's good. I'm blessed. I'm grateful. So as long as the two lads come out, out of the ring and go home to the families on Saturday night, never mind the result, I'll be happy. Definitely, Danny. But we, we know, I think, I know deep down that we'll win the fight. Nice. And that's all I've got to say. Good night, Vienna. <laughs> good night, Vienna. <laughs> Cheers, Danny. Thanks, Andrew.